Hey there, welcome back to our Sky Tonight program. My name is Seth Mayo. I'm the curator of astronomy for the Loma Planetarium at MOAS. And as we end the year and enter into 2022, we're going to cover the dates of December 27th through January 2nd. In this information-packed episode, we're going to first talk about the morning sky where we can find Mars swing by the red star Antares with the crescent moon joining in later in the week. We'll then move to the evening sky where we're going to witness a planetary switcheroo as Mercury replaces Venus towards the west. We'll then provide another update of Comet Leonard and where you can see it as it approaches the sun for perihelion. And then we'll end things by talking about the sun again as we're studying with that amazing Parker Solar Probe spacecraft that's been getting very close to the sun lately. And we'll show you some really cool updates from that mission. So let's get to it. If you've been paying attention to the early morning sky just before sunrise, looking towards the east, and in particular the southeast, you may have caught a glimpse of the red planet Mars that you find right there. Now, at the moment, Mars is not particularly bright because of how far it lies away from us and for how low it sits very near the horizon. But you may still have a chance to see this reddish, non-twinkling object in this area. What's kind of nice, though, is that Mars has gotten fairly close to the red supergiant star with a similar appearance and that is Antares that we find right there. Now, as you may know, Antares is a well-known star that forms the heart of the constellation of Scorpius the Scorpion that you can see peaking just above the southeastern horizon. It does work as the heart because it is a red star. And the name of this star is quite interesting. It is ancient Greek and it possibly means rival to Aries or opponent to Mars because the name Aries is inside the name Antares and Aries is the Greek name for Mars. Mars is the Roman name for this planet. And the idea behind this is that long ago we think that observers would have a hard time distinguishing between these two objects when they were close because they look quite similar. So the name of the star reflects that idea that it kind of rivals Mars in appearance. Now that's not completely agreed upon. The name Antares may have different origins or even different meanings, but that is one strong theory behind the name of this, which is certainly an interesting idea. But even though these two objects are similar in appearance, we now know today that they are very, very different from one another. Mars, of course, being a small terrestrial rocky planet half the size of Earth, while Antares is a red supergiant star, possibly more than 600 times larger than our sun. And if you placed Antares where our sun lies in our solar system, its outer edges would expand past the planet Mars. So it's one of the largest stars you can see with your naked eyes in our night sky. And at that size, it's about 100,000 times brighter than our sun. But it lies about 550 light years away. So that distance does diminish the brightness of the star, making it similar in appearance to Mars, which of course is much closer to us. Now, just to provide a quick update on Mars, that Mars Perseverance rover had a great year exploring the planet. Of course, it landed on Mars in February of last year in that very dramatic touchdown that was very successful and very exciting. And since then, this rover has done some amazing things, has traveled about 1.76 miles across the Martian surface, deployed the Ingenuity Mars helicopter drone that was only supposed to fly initially five times and now has flown 18 times at the time of this recording. And that helicopter has flown more than 2.2 miles across the surface and has shown us that flying over Mars is entirely possible and very useful to us for this mission and possibly for future missions as well. And Perseverance has already done some interesting science, has taken samples for later sample return, and have given us more than 180,000 pictures of where it landed in the Jezero Crater, where it hopes to find past signs of ancient microbial life. That is one of the main mission goals for Perseverance. And some of the vistas that we've captured with the cameras on board this amazing rover are breathtaking. The resolution is astounding. The details revealed is quite amazing. And all of this information, all of these observations are very accessible and easy for anyone to obtain. If if you check NASA's Mars Perseverance website. So it's always wonderful to see continued exploration of the red planet. But continuing on with what we can see in this part of the sky, this is still Monday the 26th. And what's nice on Tuesday morning the 27th, you'll find that Mars is still very close to Antares that you see here. But as we continue on, and as these two objects still remain close for the week here, 
What you may notice is that something else will join the scene. You'll see at the top of the screen, the moon, the crescent moon, will be getting closer and closer. So this is on the 28th. Then we're gonna get to the 29th on Wednesday and the moon's even closer. So then we'll get to Thursday the 30th. And then by Friday the 31st, that's of course New Year's Eve, you'll see a very thin crescent with Mars and Antares just underneath. So it kind of forms a small little triangle that we see here. So that'll be nice New Year's Eve morning if you happen to be up at that point. And if you wait in the morning of the new year on January 1st, 2022, you'll find the moon will dip below those two objects, getting very close to a new moon phase by then. So we do have some nice things in the morning to see. Two objects that look very close to each other with Mars and Antares, and eventually the moon will join as well. For 2021, we had a great year seeing the planet Venus in our sky, and particularly in the summer and the fall and we can still see it through to the end of the year as that really bright star-like object so so bright venus actually has been getting closer and closer to earth making it very bright for the month of december but as being closer its phase has been diminishing getting smaller and smaller so now it's past its peak brightness but still very noticeable if you're looking towards the southwest just after sunset it looks really, really nice. Now, one thing you will notice though is that Venus is actually moving very, very quickly in the sky. And what's replacing it is the closest planet to the sun and that's Mercury that's just below it. So you'll find Venus, which of course is much brighter here. And this is just after 6 p.m. local time here. So this will kind of differ depending on where you are, but around the time just after sunset, you may still see that planet there and then underneath it, Mercury. And Mercury moves even faster than Venus because Mercury sits even closer to the sun and it feels the sun's gravity to a higher extent. So its orbital velocity is definitely faster. So as we continue on through the week here, this is on Tuesday evening, you'll find that these two objects will undergo sort of a switcheroo in the sky. So here we go, as we go to the 28th here, and then the 29th, you'll see Venus continue to plunge near the sun's glare with Mercury rising higher and higher. Go to the 30th, and then the 31st, New Year's Eve, you'll see it even higher. Then we'll get to even New Year's, so the first and the second, and you'll see Mercury continue climbing up as well, and Venus getting really, really low in the sky. And what's happening is Venus is approaching a position where it's in between us and the sun. So that means Venus will reach a new Venus phase, when the far side, the back side of Venus will be lit, and the side nearest us will be in shadow technically, but even with that being said, it will be inside the sun's glare, so you won't see it by then. But we do have Mercury replacing it, which is not as bright, but we don't always get a chance to see this tiny little planet. Now, if we continue on, you'll notice as we get a little bit darker here, you still have a chance to see Saturn above that there, and then Jupiter for quite some time. So we do have a little more time, especially into the new year, to see those two planets. But with Venus, that will definitely be setting in the west, but we will have some time with Mercury for a short moment as it lingers above the southwestern horizon. Now, while Venus and Mercury are undergoing a little switcheroo in the sky, a little bit more to the south, you do have an opportunity to see Comet Leonard. We still want to talk about this because we don't get comets in the sky that often, and Comet Leonard has been the best comet for 2021 and one of the earliest ones discovered for this year as well. So we find it here in Stellarium, again, a little bit more to the south of where Venus and Mercury lie and a bit below Jupiter. So these are kind of reference points to sort of use if you wanna to try to locate Comet Leonard. And Comet Leonard has been mostly visible through binoculars or a telescope, but lately has been reaching naked eye visibility for some folks at about magnitude four. So that's pretty good. But the challenge of it is that it's sitting low and you do have to look through more of the atmosphere when something is low in the sky. So that makes it a little more challenging to see this comet, but there's still an opportunity to do so seeing a very ancient old icy object that's been rounding the sun, taking 80,000 years to go around the sun. And this is the last time we're gonna get a chance to see it because once it flies through the inner solar system, it's actually gonna be flung out into interstellar space forever, basically becoming a rogue comet floating away from us, not attached to our solar system anymore. And if you saw my last episode on Christmas Eve is when this comet reached its highest position above the horizon and is now starting to swing closer to the sun's glare 
once again. You're gonna actually notice that through the rest of this year if you follow along with it here. So this is on the 27th on Tuesday, but if we go to Wednesday the 28th here, then the 29th, it's still pretty high in the sky, but what you're gonna start to notice is by the 30th, then the 31st, and even the first and second, you'll still see it kind of in a similar place, but technically not sitting as high as it was in late December. And what's happening right now is that once we get to the second, and particularly the third, is when this comet goes through what's called perihelion. That is its closest approach to the sun, and that's about 0.6 AU, so that's about 60% the Earth-Sun distance. So not a sun-grazing comet, but as it approaches the sun, it's gonna heat up more and more and potentially flare up and maybe get brighter. We can't promise anything because as we've said time and time again, comets are notoriously unpredictable, but there is a chance that we'll continue to ionize and heat up and brighten up and maybe becoming even easier to see even though it's not sitting as high above the horizon. And then once perihelion happens on the third, I'll kind of preview what will happen in the future here. It's going to continue getting closer and closer to the sun and what will eventually happen, actually, it's going to dip through the sun's glare and actually be seen in the morning sky as we get through January and into February. But by then, it's moving farther from the sun and possibly dimming. So you might have more of a difficult time to see it then, but who knows? We have to just wait and see, and that's what's fun about comets. They can surprise us. But either way, we'll go back to where the comet lies here at this time of the year as we end 2021 and enter into 2022. We'll find it still in the southwest. You still have a chance to see it maybe with your naked eyes if you have all the right conditions with a very clear sky and no obstructions in your way, but most likely still best through a telescope or binoculars. And it's something personally I've been trying to see and witness, but we've had some weather to contend with towards the west after sunset. So hopefully I'll get some clear skies and maybe take a picture of it before Comet Leonard descends too closely towards the sun. Now speaking of the sun, there's been some exciting updates from that amazing NASA mission called the Parker Solar Probe. This is a spacecraft that has been getting closer and closer to the sun. It was launched in 2018 from Cape Canaveral Parker here in Solar Florida, Probe. and since then has made 10 flybys of the sun and close approaches called perihelions, where it's studying the dynamic atmosphere around the sun. These are aspects of the sun that we still don't know much about, but it influences Earth in many ways. And this new probe was designed to be able to get closer and closer to our sun. And recently, some amazing images and video release showing the footage earlier in the year when the Parker Solar Probe got to a boundary line that had never been crossed before. There is a place around the sun called the corona, which is the atmosphere of the sun. And this corona is very, very mysterious. It is surprisingly 300 times hotter than the surface of the sun. And just outside of it is the area where the particles from the sun are accelerated at tremendous speeds away from it, dragging solar material and the magnetic field out from it and creating what's called the solar wind. And that solar wind is something that Earth feels at all times. And luckily we're protected by a magnetic field that wraps around the Earth, but is heavily influenced by this constant stream of particles from the sun's solar wind. So the spacecraft and entered this boundary called the Alvin boundary. This is the boundary between the solar wind and the corona, which holds on to most of the sun's material through its gravity and its magnetic field. And once the Parker Solar Probe crossed this boundary, it gave us imagery and video like this. And it's pretty startling seeing this because this had never been seen before. What you're seeing are streamers of plasma above and below the spacecraft shooting by. And at these moments, this is when Parker Solar Probe is traveling the fastest. And very recently, when it made its 10th close approach to the sun, it was traveling a staggering 364,660 miles per hour. This spacecraft has definitely broken all the records. It is now the fastest human-made object ever put into space and will continue to break records. This is only the 10th flyby of the sun. As the spacecraft continues around around the sun, it's actually getting closer and closer each time. It's going to do it a total of 24 times. And over the next four years, it will continue getting closer, studying more of the corona, helping us understand why it's hotter than the surface, why particles are accelerated out of it, and how it influences space weather, the solar wind that affects the entire solar system. 
So it's amazing to see what the Parker Solar Probe is doing and how it's helping us to understand our nearest star to us, but it's also helping us to better understand all stars throughout the universe. And that's what's really important about this. We're getting a greater understanding of the environments around stars. So as time goes on, this probe is going to continue to get closer and closer to the sun, giving us even more data, more imagery, and possibly more videos of what it's like to be near this giant ball of hot gas at the center of our solar system. Well, that's it for our last edition of our Sky Tonight program for 2021. Thank you for tuning in to this episode and many others throughout this past year. It has continued to be great fun putting these videos together and sharing the wonders of the night sky, the universe, space flight, and space exploration with you all. Thank you very much for your support and what we are doing with this channel, and we always love to engage with you all through your wonderful comments and questions. We have a lot of great content in store for 2022, so we hope to continue to see you back here again. And with that, please stop by the Museum of Arts and Sciences and our Loman Planetarium. We have daily live and automated shows for you all to enjoy throughout the year and some amazing events that we have planned as well. So please check out our schedule online for more information. So happy new year and of course, happy stargazing.